Hi friends, very recently <coughs> the Indian wetlands have been in included in the Ramsar sites. So the wetlands in India, especially the five wetlands in India have been elevated to the status of wetlands of international importance. So it becomes very important for India to take the conservation measures to protect the wetlands, especially these newly added wetlands in India. So this is the context in which we are going to discuss about the Ramsar Convention and various wetlands of India which are included in the Ramsar Convention. Okay, what is the factual information related to the various the wetlands in India? Okay, what are the interesting facts that you know uh, enthuse our mind into studying about the wetlands in India? Okay, I welcome you to the classic education youtube channel let us discuss about the newly added wetlands in india and the ramsar convention in detail okay so this is the ramsar convention logo okay so this ramsar convention was adopted in the year 1971 so since then this is the logo which is being used by the international organizations so before going into the Ramsar Convention and the newly added wetlands in India in detail, first let us study about the significance of the wetlands. Why we are protecting the wetlands, why these wetlands are being designated as the wetlands of international importance. What is the importance or the significance of these wetlands? So in general, let us study about the significance. Okay, These wetlands are the nurseries of the life. Okay. So the wetlands compared to the total geographical area of the world or the India, they are very less in number. Okay, their size is very less. Though their size is very less, they are regarded as the nurseries of life because 40% of the animals breed in the wetlands. Animals and the birds, they will breed or they will produce their offsprings in the wetlands. Okay, so because of this, they are regarded as the nurseries of the wetland, sorry, a world. So they are also called as the kidneys of the earth. Yes, the kidney means the major function of the kidney is to the purify the blood. Okay, the, the kidneys will suck out the impurities and the, they will release the pure blood into the body. Okay, so in the same manner, these wetlands will also act as the cleaning agents. They will clean the environment from the pollutants. Yes, they will make the environment clean, clean, free from the pollutants. Okay. So because of the increased population, because of the increasing urbanization and the industrial activity, we as the human beings emitting more and more pollutants into the atmosphere. So these atmosphere pollutants will be absorbed by these wetlands in that way they are regarded as the kidneys of the earth okay they matter for the climate change because they act as the lungs of the earth so in the, by purifying the water they are acting as the kidneys of the earth they also act as the lungs of the earth so these wetlands they uh, it is not only about the water in the wetland there are various tree species which are adapted to the aquatic conditions these trees will act as the the lungs of the earth because they will absorb the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they will release the clean oxygen into the back into the atmosphere in that way they are regarded as the lungs of the earth okay so they act or they will minimize the disaster risks okay so there are various disasters especially in the coastal areas in the coastal areas we have mangrove forests okay these mangrove forests are the wetlands in the deltas of the various rivers there are mangrove forests okay they have acted as the the barrier for the uh, oncoming the wave activity okay they have minimized the risks especially in the periods of the cyclone okay or the tsunami events so they will minimize the disaster risks okay then wetlands also have a deep connection with the indian culture and the tradition not only with respect to the environment not only with respect to the the disaster management these wetlands also have the significance with respect to the culture and the tradition of india so if you look into these facts so you can understand that the wetlands are very closely associated with the day-to-day -day life of the indians okay the loktak lake which is located in the manipur state is regarded or it is revered or it is uh, respected as the ima okay so in the manipuri language it is called as the ima that is the mother the local people the, they call the loktak lake as the mother because they will get a lot of benefit from this lake so in sikkim there is a Kecheo Palri Lake, Kecheo Palri Lake. 
so it is popular as the wish fulfilling lake again see the people will go to the temples they will offer the puja and all but they will also the uh, submit their wishes also they will pray for the wishes and they they believe that the wishes will come true so in the same way the sikkim people sikkim local people will go to this kgo palri lake and they will offer their wishes and they they believe that their wishes will come true okay so in that way these lokak lake and the sikkim's kgo palri lake are very closely associated with the life of the people see there is a one important tradition especially in the northern part of india in the north india there is a very major festival called as the chhat festival okay this is uh, celebrated by especially by the women in the northern uh, india okay so during this chhat festival so the, there is association of people culture with the water and the water lands or the wetlands okay the people will go to the water bodies or especially the women they will go to the water bodies and by standing in the water bodies they will offer the the puja and all in the water body okay so without this water body this chhat puja cannot be performed okay so in this way these wetlands are associated with the culture and the tradition of the indian people not only having the ecological significance they also have the cultural significance in the indian way of life okay so globally wetlands cover 6.4% of the total geographical area of the world yes see 6.4% of the global geographical area is covered by the wetlands okay so though they cover only 6.4% of the global land surface but they will support the 40% of all the plants and the animal species okay the 40% of all plant and the animal species lie they live or breed in the wetlands yes they are regarded as the nurseries of the life because 40% of all the plant and animal species they will breed or they will live in the wetlands this is the very very significance of the wetlands with respect to the ecology and the biodiversity okay so these are all these all points highlight the significance of the wetlands in the world as well as in the cultural way of the india okay now let us come to the ramsar convention on the wetlands so after understanding what is the ramsar convention how many you know wetlands are included here when this uh, convention came into existence and all after studying all these details let us go into the next uh, part that is the newly added wetlands in india okay these five wetlands are added into this convention let us study after uh, those you know wetlands after the detailed discussion about this ramsar convention on wetlands okay it is an international treaty for the conservation and the sustainable use of the wetlands yes this treaty this is the multinational treaty it is an inter, inter uh, international treaty it is an intergovernment you know agreement okay which is aimed at the conservation of, and the sustainable use of the wetlands okay conserving as well as the sustainably using the resources of the wetlands it is also known as the convention on the wetlands because this convention is related to the conservation as well as the sustainable use of the wetlands it is also called as the convention on the wetlands okay so it is named after the city of ramsar okay this is very important why we are calling it as the ramsar convention there are various convention like the minamata convention is there right so likewise this is the ramsar convention because this convention is named after the city of ramsar which is located in the country of iran okay so this convention was signed on 2nd of february 1971 okay this is very important year as well as the date so this ramsar convention was signed in the year 1971 on the day of february 2nd but the place was the ramsar which is the city in the major city in the iran which is located on the banks of the caspian sea or the shores of the caspian sea okay so we will look into the map and we will locate this ramsar city in the map itself okay the number of contracting parties to the convention is 172 so there are member countries so like the united nation organization like the unfcc like the ipcc there are various other panels are there who wto various international organizations are there and there are various participating member countries likewise in the ramsar convention also there are 172 countries which are called as the 
contracting parties okay they are called as the contracting parties which are 172 in numbers okay so there are total two according to the ramsar convention website so there are 2445 designated sites which cover 255 million hectares in the world okay so this 255 million hectare that is the 6.4 percent of the total geographical area of the world okay they cover so much of the area and there are 2445 uh, wetlands of international importance in the world okay <coughs> so this is the city of ramsar okay this is the city of ramsar which is located in, in the country of iran okay this whole is country is the iran okay so whatever i am marking this creates the border of the iran okay so this is the country of iran in the northern part of iran there is a place called as the ramsar which is located on the shores of the caspian sea okay in the northern part of the iran there is a water body called as the caspian sea in the southern part of iran there are again two water bodies they are the persian gulf as well as the gulf of oman okay this persian gulf is you know uh, in the northern part of this gulf of oman okay gulf of oman is below and the above gulf of oman there is the persian gulf the persian gulf and the gulf of oman they are located in the southern part of iran but in the northern part of iran there is the caspian sea in this caspian sea shore there is a city called as the ramsar city in this city this convention was signed on february 2nd 1971 okay now because this convention was signed on february 2nd the world leaders or the countries celebrate or they observe second february every year as the world wetlands day okay we have designated a day especially for the wetlands also that day falls on the february 2nd because on this day the international convention or the ramsar convention on wetlands was signed in the year 1971 okay so in 2021 on february 2nd the world had observed the world wetlands day so the theme of this day was the wetlands action for people and the nature okay the theme was wetlands action for people and the nature this day was celebrated celebrated for the first time when this day was selected though the convention was signed in the year 1971 we are not observing the world wetland day from the 1971 onwards okay but we are celebrating it from the year 1997 okay since 2022 this was the 25th uh, sorry if yes uh, this is the 25th year of uh, celebration of the world wetlands day okay so this is about the world wetland day now again uh, the convention in detail this is the oldest multilateral international con conservation convention yes see with respect to the conservation of the any of the uh, ecosystem this is the first and this is the oldest multilateral you know convention okay you have to remember this is very important fact this is the oldest convention with respect to the conservation of any of the ecosystem this is the only one convention which deals with the one habitat or the ecosystem type see there are various convention united nation framework convention on climate change is there inter panel uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change is there right all those conventions are the panels they are you know they are they are multi uh, what you call multi-departmental in nature because they involve various other angles in their operation but this convention is related to only with one ecosystem okay when you call the UNFCC it is related to the pollution okay but this pollution will come from various sources whether it is a water pollution or air pollution or noise pollution all of such convention uh, sorry pollutions are included in the UNFCC that is the convention but this convention is associated with only one particular ecosystem that is the wet land ecosystem okay this is very very peculiar and a very significant fact of this convention okay this is the only one such convention which is related to one habitat or only one ecosystem that is the wetlands now the convention's headquarter which it is located in the gland again which is located in the switzerland okay the gland city of the switzerland it is the headquarter for this ramsar convention okay not the 
Ramsar. The name is Ramsar Convention, but the headquarter is located in the Switzerland, that is the gland. Okay. When a country accedes to the convention, that is when a particular country wants to wants to become the participating country or it, if it wants to become the member of the Ramsar Convention, it must designate at least one wetland as the wetland of international importance. So this is very, very important. See, it is a mandatory for a participating country or the contracting country or the contracting participant. The member of this convention is called as the contracting country. So that country, if particular country becomes the member of this convention, it must sign or it must designate one wetland as the wetland of international importance. Because these wetlands are the very, very significant with respect to the ecological balance okay when a country becomes it becomes a uh, member of this convention it also becomes the mandatory for the country to manage the ecosystem very well okay it is an obligation on a particular participating country to manage the wetland ecosystem in a proper way okay this is the mandatory rule of this convention see 170 there are 172 countries in this convention out of 172 as of now 170 of the contracting parties have designated at least one Ramsar site that means 170 countries have the at least one Ramsar sites in their countries out of this 31 of the contracting countries have only one site that means out of 172 okay 31 members have only one wetland of important international importance and rest of the 141 countries have more than one wetland of international importance okay the countries see in this con uh, convention I have said that all the member countries must have at least one wetland. But there are some of the countries which have most number of the wetlands in their country. They are the United Kingdom. United Kingdom under this convention has 175 wetlands of international importance. Okay, followed by the Mexico. Mexico has 142 Ramsar sites and the United Kingdom has 175 Ramsar sites. These are the countries which have the largest number of the wetlands of international importance in their countries okay now the world's first site which was the first site which uh, or the wetland which was regarded or which was designated as the inter, uh, wetland of international importance that is the coburg peninsula of the australia so this coburg peninsula of australia was designated as the wetland of international importance in the year 19 74 this is the first ramsar site in the world which is located in australia okay then the largest site under the ramsar convention this is the country with the largest number of the wetlands but which country has the largest wetland by size okay that is the brazil brazil has the largest wetland in the world that is the rio negro okay rio negro uh, wetland in Brazil is the largest Ramsar site in the world. Okay, Rio Negro. It is the name of the river. Okay, this river is the largest left tributary of the Amazon River. Brazil, yes, it is known for the Amazon River as well as the Amazon Forest. The Rio Negro. It is the left bank tributary. Uh, I, I, actually, it is the largest left bank tributary of the Amazon River, which is located in the Brazil. And this Rio Negro wetland is the world's largest Ramsar site. Now, what are the three pillars of the convention? What constitutes the basic structure or what constitutes the basic mandatory or the basic purpose or the basic uh, the objective behind this convention is the three pillars. Okay. All the contracting parties they will commit themselves to work towards the wise use of all their wetlands yes we have seen the ecological significance of these wetlands because of those uh, their ec uh, ecological significance these countries will work towards the wise use of their wetlands wise use is, is very important 
through the national plans, policies, legislations, management actions and the public education. By creating the awareness among the people, by bringing the laws, by making the policies, these countries will wisely use the wetlands in their countries. Okay, This is one commitment. Then these countries will also commit to designate the suitable wetlands for the list of wetlands of international importance yes every year these countries will designate some of the sites are the wetlands for uh, designating them as the wetlands of international importance this year india got the uh, the five wetlands as the wetlands of international importance why this happened because every year india lists some of the wetlands for the consideration as the ramsar sites okay this is the all the member countries are the contracting parties action in uh, every year okay then these countries will also commit to cooperate internationally so on the transboundary wetlands shared wetland systems shared species and the development projects that may affect the wetlands yes they will also cooperate and they will also coordinate internationally if the wetland is falling on the borders of the different states okay the, if the wetland is falling on the border states or the border countries there becomes the cooperation very important okay so they will cooperate and they will coordinate in managing such transboundary wetlands also these are the three major commitments of the member countries in the the ramsar convention and these are called as the three major pillars of this ramsar convention now we are discussing about the wetlands but what e actually is the wetland what is the definition of the wetland so this convention has defined the wetland as uh, like this okay according to the ramsar convention the wetland is areas of marsh any area which is a marsh a fen peatland or water whether natural or artificial they are not considered about whether it is artificial or natural any water body which is a marsh a fen peatland or the water permanent or temporary this wetland may be a permanent body or it may be a temporary body okay with water that is a static or flowing even whether the water is flowing or it is a stagnant or it is standing water they are not bothered about okay whether it is a fresh water or brackish water or the salt water that does not matter including areas of marine water even the ocean water is also included in this uh, wetland convention but the only one a very important um, a requirement is that the de depth of the water should not exceed the six meters this is very important okay so whether the water is a fresh water or the salt water or the brackish water whether the water is standing or whether it is a uh, flowing whether the water body is a seasonal or whether it is the permanent water body that uh, does, does not matter but it should be a wetland but the only requirement is that the water or the stagnating uh, stagnating water should not be more than 6 meter in depth okay this is the only requirement this is the definition of the wetland according to the ramsar convention okay but india according to its own conditions according to its own context it has modified the definition of the the wetland given by the ramsar convention the government of india uh, in the wetlands rules of the 2017 it has defined the wetland as such okay so again the whatever the definition i have read so far it holds good uh, in the india's context also but india has excluded some of the water bodies or the uh, the wetlands out of the purview of this definition what is that so so far till this is six meter the definition is same according to the ramsar convention but in india the following water bodies are not included in this definition what are they they are the river channels paddy fields human made water bodies are the tanks specially constructed for drinking water purposes and structures uh, especially constructed for aquaculture salt production recreation and irrigation purposes see these all water bodies are associated with the economical activity of the human beings okay such water bodies are not included in the definition of wetlands in india but these water bodies can be included in the definition of ramsar convention but we have modified the definition of the ramsar convention and we have adopted the different definition according to our own context in india okay so this definition is given in the wetland conservation and management rules of 2017 okay this is what is an uh, wetland now what are the different ramsar sites in india okay this becomes very important i 
in india there are 54 wetlands when these wetlands have been started to be designated as the ramsar sites okay how many sites such sites are there let us look into that uh, aspect this ramsar convention entered into force in india on february 1st 1982 though the convention was signed on the february 2nd 1972 in the ramsar india adopted or this convention entered into force in the 1982 in india okay different countries have adopted this con uh, convention in different years but the india adopted in the year 1982 there are 52 ramsar sites in india including the very recent five new ramsar sites there are total 52 ramsar sites presently in india as of july 28th there are 28 2022 there are 52 ramsar sites in india india has the highest number of ramsar sites in the whole of south asia this is very important in the world united kingdom with 175 ramsar sites it is the country having the largest number of ramsar sites but in the south asian region india is the country which has the highest number of ramsar sites with 52 sites in number okay these are wetlands deemed to be of international importance under the ramsar convention yes once these uh, wetlands are listed in the ramsar convention they are deemed to be the international uh, or the wetlands of international importance okay now according to the uh, wwf india worldwide fund for nature wetlands are one of the most threatened of all the ecosystems in india there are various ecosystems like the grassland ecosystem forest ecosystem marine ecosystem right this is also one ecosystem wetland ecosystem these uh, among all these ecosystems wetland ecosystem is the most threatened of all the ecosystems in india okay this is the statement given by wwf okay worldwide fund for nature so <coughs> what are the threats to these wetlands the threats are loss of vegetation salinization excessive inundation water pollution invasive species of the plants or as well as the animals excessive development and the road building these have become the threats to the wetland conservation okay or the existence of wetlands as well as for the wildlife diversity in these wetland ecosystems okay with respect to india uttar pradesh has the highest number of the wetlands in the country okay in india uttar pradesh with the 10 wetlands it is the state having the highest number of the uh, Ramsar sites in India. Please remember this fact, Uttar Pradesh. So, 52 Ramsar sites, they are represented in this, you know, pictographic manner. So, these are the different states having the different uh, 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 wetlands, okay. So, there is a uh, Union Territory of Ladakh, which has the So Moriri and the So Kar. The, these are, there are two uh, Ramsar sites in Ladakh. Pong, uh, Pong Dam Lake, Chandra Lake, Renuka Lake, they are located in the Punjab, okay. So, different states have the different wetlands, but the Uttar Pradesh with the list of 10 wetlands are the Ramsar sites. This is the state having the highest number of Ramsar sites in India. So, this is the northern part of India having the different wetlands. So, this is the southern part of India which, you know, depict the different wetlands including the very recent one okay so karkili bird sanctuary this is very recent as well as the palli palli karnai marsh reserve area pichavaram mangrove forest these are the three uh, new uh, wetlands in uh, ramsar sites okay they all are located in the state of tamil nadu okay this is the southern part of india with the ramsar sites okay now look into the new and the very recent Ramsar sites in India okay one is the Karikili bird sanctuary which is located in Tamil Nadu see out of these five uh, newly added Ramsar sites three are located in Tamil Nadu one is in Madhya Pradesh and one is in Mizoram okay these are the five uh, the Ramsar new Ramsar sites in India one is the Karikili bird sanctuary in Tamil Nadu so this sanctuary is spread over f 5 kilometer wide belt okay it's uh, it has the expanse of the 5 kilometer area it is a uh, home to various bird species like the cormorants egrets gray heron open billed stork 
डार्टर स्पून बिल व्हाइट इब्निश नाइट हेरॉन्स ग्रेबेस ग्रे पेलिकन एंड वेरियस बर्ड स्पीशीज दीज आर ऑल द बर्ड स्पीशीज हुच आर डवेलिंग इन दिस कारिकली बर्ड सेंचुरी इन तमिलनाडु ओके दिस इज द वन रिमेंबर कारिकली बर्ड सेंचुरी देन पल्ली करनाई मार्श रिजर्व फॉरेस्ट अगेन लोकेटेड इन द तमिलनाडु पल्ली करनाई मार्श रिजर्व फॉरेस्ट इट इज अ रिजर्व फॉरेस्ट सो फार इट इज वन ऑफ द लास्ट रिमेनिंग नैचुरल वेटलैंड ओके द मार्श ड्रेन्स इन एन एरिया ऑफ टू फिफ्टी स्क्वेर किलोमीटर एंड कंपासिंग सिक्सटी फाइव स्मॉलर वेटलैंड ओके दिस इज वेरी बिग इन साइज ओके इट इज वन ऑफ द लास्ट रिमेनिंग नैचुरल वेटलैंड ओके देर आर वेरियस यू नो artificial wetlands are also which are you know, included in the ramsar sites in india but this is the natural wetland this is one of the few natural coastal aquatic habitats remember this is the coastal wetland coastal aquatic habitat that qualify as the wetland in india so compared to the inland ecosystem uh, wetlands coastal eco, uh, sorry wetlands are less in number but this palli karnai marsh reserve forest is the coastal wetland remember again located in the state of tamil nadu then third a uh, new wetland again located in the state of tamil nadu that is the pichavaram mangrove forest or the pichavaram mangrove wetland so this is one of the last mangrove forests in the country yes west bengal gujarat karnataka andhra pradesh various states coastal states have the mang mangrove forests in the delta areas okay but the mangrove forest area is increasing according to the forest survey of india the mangrove forest is increasing but there are some of the forest mangrove forest which are dwindling in size okay we have to conserve this mangrove forest also but this is one of the last mangrove forest in the country which is you know uh, struggling to exist there is a threat to this you know for, uh, wetland also it has an island of a vast expanse of water covered with the mangrove forest this as as the name itself suggests it is the the mangrove forest area mangrove wetland okay the fourth new wetland or the ramsar site is the sakya sagar which is located in the madhya pradesh this is very important it has important because of the factual information like the national park this is created from the manier river okay this wetland is created because of the the river channel called as the manier river manier river has created this sakya sagar in the madhya pradesh this sakya sagar wetland is located near the madhav national park yes madhav national park is it is the Dif, uh, we, uh, one among the different national parks in the madhya pradesh in this national park this sakya sagar wetland is located okay remember this madhav national park then fifth one is the pala wetland which is located in the mizoram pala wetland in the mizoram this is the largest natural wetland in the mizoram okay loktak lake it is located in manipur but this is the pala wetland which is located in the mizoram this is the largest natural wetland in mizoram okay its geographical location falls under the indo burma biodiversity hotspot again this is very very important factual information indo burma biodiversity hotspot in this area this pala wetland of mizoram is falling okay it is therefore rich in animal and the plant species the biodiversity hotspot indicates that it is very rich in the wildlife okay so this pala wetland is very very rich in the uh, wildlife okay especially the animal as well as the plant species the lake is a major component of the palak wildlife sanctuary again the palak or the palak wildlife sanctuary this is the wet, uh, pala wetland is the part of palak world of sanctuary in the mizoram okay apart from being the part of indo burma biodiversity hotspot it is also part of the palak or the palak wildlife sanctuary in the mizoram okay this is the mizoram's first wetland yes in the northeast the assam the manipur different states have the ramsar sites in their uh, location but the mizoram for the first time it is getting the ramsar site okay this is the pala wetland now very interesting fact related to the ramsar sites in india let us discuss about the largest ramsar sites in india the smallest ramsar site as well as the oldest ramsar sites in india so this is very very interesting fact you have to remember uh, with respect to the examination point of view you have to remember the largest smallest as well as the oldest ramsar sites in india 
सो बाय साइज सुंदरबन वेटलैंड व्हिच इज लोकेटेड इन द वेस्ट बंगाल इज द लार्जेस्ट वेटलैंड इन इंडिया ओके नो डाउट द सुंदरबन वेटलैंड इन द वेस्ट बंगाल फॉलोड बाय द वेम्बनाड कोल और द वेम्बनाड वेटलैंड इन द केरला ओके वेम्बनाड कोल वेटलैंड दिस इज द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट वेटलैंड the followed by the sundarbans third one is the chilika lake which is located in the state of odisha okay then kolleru lake in the state of andhra pradesh the bhitar karnika mangrove wetland in the odisha ashtamudi wetland in the kerala these are the top 6 largest wetlands in india which are regarded as the wetlands of international importance are the ramsar sites okay then which is the smallest one these six are the largest wetlands but which is the smallest in size that is the renuka wetland in the himachal pradesh which has the area of only 0.2 square kilometer this is very very small wetland but it has got the status of international uh, wetland of international importance because of the biodiversity or because of the uh, the nourishing nature of this wetland with respect to the migratory birds as well as the uh, the native birds in india okay but the which are the oldest ramsar sites are the which which were the first ramsar sites in india they are the chilika lake as well as the kiolaria kiolario ghana national park okay chilika lake which is located in odisha kiolario ghana national park which is located in rajasthan these are the two oldest na uh, sorry wetlands in india which were designated as ramsar sites in the year 1981 okay now when we are discussing about the ramsar sites we must discuss about the mantriox record also this is like the red data list of the iucn see iucn lists the various animal as well as the bird species in the red data list in the same way this mantriox record also lists the some of the wetlands in this you know record because these wetlands are under threat okay the wetlands which are under danger which are about to be Uh, uh becoming under the threat they are included in this mantrax record this is part of the ramsar list okay it is a registered or the it is a register of wetland sites on the list of wetlands of international importance or the ramsar uh, site list where changes in the ecological character have occurred see this is very important what kind of wetlands are included in the mantrax record they are the wetlands where the changes in the ecological character have have occurred or occurring or are likely to occur okay the ecological change there should be a change in the character of the ecology of this wetland okay whether this change has already occur occurred or whether it is occurring or it is likely to occur okay as a result of technological development pollution or other human interference okay if there is a danger to such wetlands they are regarded as the sites under the mantrax record okay this is very important it is a, it is maintained as part of ramsar site okay ramsar list when there is a ramsar list side by side there is also a mantrax record also okay it is established by the recommendation of the conference of the contracting parties in the year 1990 okay this record came into being because of the recommendation made by the various participating countries in the year 1990 it was adopted by the conference in the year 1996 though the recommendation came in the year 1990 this mantrax record came into effect from the year 1996 okay this record is employed to identify the priority sites for positive national and the international conservation attention yes because these wetlands are under thre uh, threat okay to conserve such the wetlands which are under threat or which are going to be under threat so they are identified under this mantrax uh, record okay now as in august 2021 there are 48 sites which are listed in the mantrax record so there are more than 4000 uh, sorry 2445 wetlands in the uh, sorry ramsar sites in ramsar list but there are 48 sites in the mantrax record okay in the world the sites may be added to and removed from the record only with the approval of the contracting parties in which they lie see if a particular wetland has to be included in the mantrax record there should be a permission from the 
particular country in which the wetland is located. For example, in India, if the Ashtamudi Lake is to be included in the Mantrax record, the Ramsar site or the convention must take the permission of the India to include the Ashtamudi Lake in the Mantrax record. Okay, this is the precondition for including the particular wetland in the Mantrax record. Okay, there are 48 uh, wetlands in the Mantrax record in the world as of now. But what about the India's wetlands which are included in the Mantrax record? See, there are two wetlands which are included in this Mantrax record in India. They are Kioladio National Park in the Rajasthan and the Loktak Lake in the Manipur. Okay, These two uh, wetlands are under the Mantrax record because they are facing some of the uh, risks related to their ecological character okay that's why they are included in the mantrax record but there is one more interesting case that is the chilka lake this chilka lake was in the record of the mantrax record but later this chilka lake is removed from this mantrax record because the chilka lake once upon a time it was facing the ecological problem now because of the conservation efforts because of the stringent implementation of the various laws in this chilika lake by the odisha government now this chilika lake is removed from the mantrax record as of now only two wetlands are included in this mantrax record in india they are Kyo, Kyo Ladio national park as well as the loktak lake okay now there are other organizations which will support the implementation of the objectives of the Ramsar Convention okay they are six in number these international organizations are six in number they are called as the international organization partners of the Ramsar Convention okay so they are World Life International Wetlands International IUCN Worldwide Fund for Nature International Water Management Institute Wild Wild Fowl and the Wetlands Trust okay these are the six participating organizations okay are the international organization partners in the Ramsar Convention okay this is all about the Ramsar Convention as well as the newly added five wetlands of international importance in India okay thank you very much for watching this video